it's the weekend, so let's have some fun. If there's something I'm learning with the Apple IIe project, it's that things in the past were actually built to be fixed. Some of them, like this drive, they even came with the tools to fix them. It's amazing. Let me show you what I mean. This will spin when the drive is working, and as you can see here, there are two numbers, 60 and 50. This is the energy frequency, 60 for some countries, 50 for other countries, okay? And if the speed is correct, the frequency will match the light frequency, and you see this marks as if they were not moving. And around here, let me find it, here it is, there's a little screw that you can turn to the right or to the left to make this seem like it is not moving to see the pattern static. Isn't this amazing? But there's a little problem. This was built to work with incandescent light <laughs> and everything nowadays is LED. So I went to Google and of course there is a solution. There is an app that will make our phone's flashlight flicker mimicking an incandescent light and we can point it here and turn the screw to the left and the right to fix the speed. But I'm getting way ahead of myself here, so let's start from the beginning. Thanks to demand and scarcity, vintage computer parts are getting more and more expensive every day, but I knew I'd need at least one drive to make this project work and I kept searching for a miracle on eBay. After many months, I finally found one that I was willing to pay what the seller was asking for, but it was listed as untested. Okay, it looks like it is in good condition. No rust, the boards look great. So, let's test it. Okay, this is more of a power or sound test because they don't have any discs. I order some, but they haven't arrived yet. They're arriving in the next couple of days. So let's see if it powers on and if it sounds okay. So there's a right way to connect that cable. You gotta be careful because if you reverse it, you can burn the drive. And you have to put it on this slot. This is the one for the disc. And of course, I already have the information here on Evernote. So let me check because I don't remember it. Long story short, there's a red line that works as a guide. And my future self ended up finding a simple solution to avoid mistakes. And of course, I don't even know if the card itself is working. <laughs> Let me try to, I don't know how to say this, call the disk. <laughs> it's PR number. Then you have to type this lot name. That is the six PR hashtag six. Okay. I need a disk. So we'll soon know if it is actually working. If this is not perfect timing, I don't know what it is. Minutes after that first test, the discs arrived. By the way, these are very specific discs. They have to be double side and double density. High density discs will not work. Okay, it was finally time to create my first disc using the ADT Pro solution. If you don't know what that is or if you want to learn how to do it, there's another video here on the channel. Check the links in the description below. Everything was looking good. But, of course, there was a problem. No matter what I do, I'm constantly getting this error message. It stops right here, writing on the disk. And it can be many things. It can be a disk problem, it can be a drive problem, because it always stops here. But if it's the disk, maybe all the disks are, I don't know. Maybe it's a, an audio problem. I don't know. There are so many variables.
This was when my Google search pointed to the solution I talked about in the beginning of the video and I decided to try my luck. And sure enough, after a lot of tweaking, that was not something easy to do. I could finally create my first disk. However, again, this was not a permanent solution. Sometimes it would work, other times it would not. These are speed errors pointed by the XPS diagnostic software. This was the first disk I created. I choose it because it also has another very useful tool. I can see on the screen the actual speed of the disk and adjust it to the 300 RPM, which is the correct speed of an Apple II disk drive. No, unfortunately, that was not the end of my problems. Sometimes this Apple IIe project feels like uh, levels of a video game. I have to finish one to unlock the next one, and I still had one to unlock. Most of the discs I was creating worked, but sometimes one or another would still generate an error right before the ending of the recording. Uh, a little past that, that point that I was having the problem before, but right to the end, when it was almost there, it would crash. I would get that same error message. Ah, oh, what could this be? In situations like this, I stop and give myself a break, especially in personal projects like this. By the way, this took weeks, not an afternoon, not some days, weeks. Everything you're seeing here in minutes took weeks. This is a personal project that I was working on during my weekends, so it took a lot of time. And a couple of days after that break, I had this click moment. One of the softwares that I was trying to record to the disk was a very large one. Let me show you how one of these disks work. So what happens here is the computer reads or write from inside the disk to the edges. There's a disk, of course, here. And if it's a small software, of course, it's going to write just a little bit of the disk. And if it's a large one, it's going to reach the edge of the disk. And I decided to try to record a large software with the drive opened. And that's when I noticed a weird noise at the end of the recording. This time I didn't need Google's help. That sounded like the drive asking for a little bit of lubrication. Thank you so much for watching, see you soon.